Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Green Link Podcast. My name is Austin Carr, and I am joined here today by Mr. Jared Cacciatore. Good to see you. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the solar industry in general, some of the challenges and the changes that are taking place. Um, as we all know, there's been a lot happening, even as recently as last week. We saw Sun Power file for bankruptcy. There's been a lot of chatter and concern as far as the direction that things are going in. And uh, so today, Jared and I are going to talk a little bit about it, what we're seeing, and how GreenLink is adapting and positioning ourselves to make sure that we are here for the long haul for our customers. Right on. So, Jared, I'd love to hear kind of a high-level take on, you know, some of the things that you're seeing. What are you thinking about, you know, with Sun Power going out last week? And, again, they're just one of the many dominoes that have fallen over the last couple of years. Uh, what are your thoughts on things? I would argue uh, that this is simply, you know, if you looked far enough ahead, it's something that that if you're honest with yourself, certainly now in hindsight, you could see it coming, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. It, it's uh, the the industry has been uh, it it hasn't you know as a whole unfortunately hasn't had the best reputation, um, yeah. and uh, it's been it's a it's an industry that is sort of uh, uh, GreenLink is is a rare exception that I'm grateful to be a part of but but I would say the bulk of the industry is very um, you know is very like hustle and ch- you know very hustle hustle chasing the uh, you know chasing the commissions sure flashing fake pictures of your rented lambo sounds you like know. the solar bros type yeah. situation solar right bros, yeah. you know and they're and they're bedazzled jeans and yeah and uh <laughs> you know just sure. just trying to flex on each other and 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 just all testosterone and not a lot of brains yeah and, and it's it's wild, and there's nothing wrong. With, I mean, I've, I have nothing nothing at all against uh, making money in solar. It's why I, that's sure. why I got into yeah, it, and yeah. I I haven't hated that part of it. Right. But you know, um, but I would say I saw the cracks appearing years years ago. You mm-hmm. know, like when I first got into the industry, and I would argue that, that this this these seeds that are are now like sprouting and yeah. and uh, fruiting into uh, uh, you know you know just piles of stuff we can't say because of well, <laughs> turning uh, into yeah. a bonfire yeah yeah uh yeah yeah it's just you know yeah it's just been a real it's been a real dumpster fire but i would say that 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 fire started quite quite some time ago it's yeah. just yeah i've seen a, a number of themes um that that number of themes in individual companies mm-hmm. and and you know you see it replicated time and again and then you know just some some uh you know fragility in the models of most solar companies that yeah, if if that. the wind blows just a little bit yeah they're not it's a house of cards it's a house of cards right. that's a good way to put it yeah um and you know so everything from from poor financial management within mm-hmm. the company to uh basing the business model too narrowly on on what what's working right now and not thinking about the fact that that might go away soon right um you know, putting the wrong people in the wrong positions, yeah. or, you know, where you need somebody of, of really high competence, high ethics, mm. um, and, um, and, and, you know, really not, not planning for the rainy day future. Yeah. And as a, you know, I think about a consumer, right? So maybe somebody that's listening to this podcast, they haven't gotten solar yet. They're thinking about it oh. and they're in this position where they're like, okay, is this the right thing for me to do? What comes to your mind as some of the things that they can watch for and research and ask about when they're trying to go through that decision making process to make sure that they do land with the right company and understanding? I don't think there's a silver bullet for this, right? You can't go and look at people's financial statements for the organization, I suppose, unless they're publicly traded. But by and large, you know, a customer doesn't have that visibility. But uh, you know, what what things can a general consumer do to protect themselves? You know, I think. In this I, this is one of those things that I wish I wasn't having an I told you so moment in my head yeah. because like over and over again I would tell when I was a sales rep I would tell customers and then I would train train sales reps to tell customers uh, which what what is I believe to be the truth and we're now seeing is the truth which is that your best bet is is a a tenured you know good reputation local company I don't it doesn't I could say solar company but I'll, I'll throw any other, uh, you know, service or, or construction or contracting yeah, it's a good point. solution in there. I mean, it it's, it's, you know, accountability is higher. Yeah. You have higher transparency. 
um, you know, uh, you, you can trust the reviews yeah. because they're local reviews of people in your community. Uh, it's a lot harder to fake it. Yep. And, um, and, and you get, a, you get to look them in the eye. There's, that's not bad. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I think, you know, as, as I think back and I will answer your question, but to, as I think back on things that I was telling customers four or five years ago, it was, you know, your, your best bet. And it, and it was corroborated by, by things I would show them, you know, uh, very reputable online opinions, like solarreviews.com and so forth that yep. says your best bet is to go with a local reputable solar company. Here's why, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's coming true. And, and I, I would say, you know, um, you, you know, what are some, what are some of the reasons you, you do, like I said, high accountability, um, you know, what, what does high accountability mean? You, you have human beings who, and, and, and you know, a physical address, uh, for, you know, for that's <laughs> for the company you're doing business right. with. That's a big deal. I mean, you can walk into Greenlink and catch my attention or your attention yeah. just as a as a general homeowner that hasn't purchased and that is in that stage of trying to make the right decision. Uh, we've had that happen several times, right? You're not going to mm -hmm. walk into you know more than likely, obviously, like SunPower, who's gone. So I'll use them as an example. Mm -hmm. You're not going to walk in and go talk to the CRO or the president of the organization and say, are you the right for, fit for me and tell me why you, you're not going to get that, that level of service and detail, which uh, I'm not saying we're just standing by waiting at our desk for somebody to walk in, but right. we are real people and we're here having the conversations. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, as any business owner, owner knows scaling is really difficult. Yeah. So it's hard enough to make something work at a small scale, mm -hmm. but the mistakes are a lot less expensive control is easier as you scale up you have to be a lot more intentional um and and if you make the wrong scaling decisions f further down the food chain or further up the food chain i should say you know uh you know it's it's it is uh, yeah those upstream decisions if they're the wrong ones can can have huge impact at scale right sure. so and and i think we're seeing that with with Sun Power, I mean, Sun Run has had, uh, you know, they're still they're still going strong as far as we can tell, but they've mm -hmm. had some bumps in the road. Uh, these some of these big, too big to fail. I mean, I, I was seeing a lot of flexing on the Solar Pros uh, Facebook group recently uh, uh, about about you know Titan Solar before they uh, before they went belly up, right? Sure. About yeah. how like oh Titan's the best. And yeah. Nobody can, nobody can yeah. mess with Titan, and well, yep. how'd that go for they're you? They're gone. Um, and and you know. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, high accountability is great, you know, local, you know, reputation management. Uh, the fact that you're going to get, you know, good response, good customer service response, quick response. Yeah. And 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 because because that especially in a regional area, word spreads very quickly. Mm -hmm. Most of those companies are are really they, they don't want bad reviews. Right. right? They don't yeah. want to live with the 1.9 out of five, for sure. uh, you know, rating that Tesla has, or yeah. you know, or some of the other the other companies. It's they're they can't afford it. We can't afford it, right? We yep. it's we live and die like our business lives and dies by the level of customer experience and satisfaction that the, that we deliver. Absolutely. And yeah. um, and while I would say even the big companies would call that important. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's very tough to tough to deliver on. You know, I always I would always say to customers, and I would say it's still the case now. You know, yes, for sure. I mean, Tesla is going to be considerably cheaper, mm -hmm. right? You don't know who's going to install your system, so Great there's point. no quality control. Great point. Yeah. Um, there's you 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 uh, and when you call to get customer service, it's like calling xfinity or verizon to make right. make a complaint yeah you're not calling and getting leanne on the phone no who is our customer success person in solar you're going to call you're going to speak with her direct and once she gets off that phone she's marching right over to whoever she needs to go to and having a conversation mm -hmm. getting to the bottom of the problem or the question that's being asked to get the answer and getting right back to the customer that's a great point and i th you know as i think back to about some of the stories i've heard about you know customers that have given money to a solar company they're planning on getting a system installed right one of the themes I hear commonly is the communication started to drop off. They weren't returning calls. They weren't being as responsive. 
I think that's a good telltale sign that there might be problems happening. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's too late at that point. But even as a consumer, and this is kind of getting a little bit of judo, mind judo going on here. But, you know, if I'm a customer, and I'm taking the time to make sure I'm making the right decision. Maybe I want to call in and act like I'm uh, needing customer support or try to find out more about what that customer su- support is experience looks like on the back end because that's something your sales rep of course is like oh it's great top notch five stars but is it really um and that's something that you know you can see in our reviews and probably other local installers reviews where you know what did that customer experience look like post install i think that says a lot about an organization yeah absolutely and i mean it's like yeah it we're human you know we make mistakes on customer systems but i've you know, stood across from you uh, when I was try- trying to walk into your office to, to, you know, talk about something else. And you're on the phone with a customer making things right. You yeah. know, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, you know, a good a good company is there stands behind their their customers. And, and to have access to the, the folks on the top of the company, I think, is, is a huge, huge benefit. But, um, you know, I mean, I think d- d- where you want to kind of maybe break down, I think we, we, we talked recently about what are like the common what are the common themes with these companies who fail yeah um and 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 why should consumers be be concerned concerned about it what should they look for Mm -hmm. uh what sort of questions should they ask you know yeah um i think those things are pretty important you know if you want to dive in on any of those yeah let's dive in i mean i i can tell you you know one thing that comes to my mind i'm just thinking off off the top of my head here is, as we talk about this uh if i'm a consumer and we've said this before too but i'm watching out to make sure that i'm not dealing with a sales org i think right out of the gate that is a huge mistake in my opinion yep. uh working with a vertically integrated company which means they're the company you're dealing with the, the guy you're buying from works for the company the same company that's going to install your system the same company that's going to service and warranty your system yep. Um, again, maybe that doesn't give you insight into their financial status and if they're going out of business, but that's a starting point right there. You should be working with a vertically integrated installer. And I would say the same thing, like you said, in, in all contracting, maybe, you know, certainly in kind of the, the smaller service stuff, HVAC windows and things like that. Uh, it's very common. I was talking to a guy today and he was talking about maybe he wants to get into solar and start a business. And so we were chatting a little bit and I told him, you know, there's a couple different types of structures. A common one is people will start up as a sales organization Mm -hmm. and they really don't have the expertise and the knowledge that a vertically integrated company will have. Yeah. And, and, and often don't have the the local knowledge, you know, I mean, absolutely. I mean, shoot, just, just one utility company here in Illinois, ComEd, right. Has, it's an incredible amount of, of, of things that you need to know to really truly be an expert. To maximize that for the customer. I mean, we've spent, I mean, hundreds probably of man hours. Oh my gosh. Easily. Digging, yeah. Easily digging into that and making sure. And and I believe it would be fair to say that we are, um, have to be among the most knowledgeable uh, organizations. I'm not even talking just installers. I'm just talking all the things as far as the utility companies and the structure and the billing cycles and the impacts and the net metering and all the different things going on there. We spend a huge amount of time and, and it doesn't necessarily help us with sales. We do that because it's the right thing to do for our yep. customers to make sure we're giving them the right information and educating them at the highest level they can. They can take that information and still continue to shop around. That's great. But mm-hmm. at least now they know what's going on and they have the truth and that's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah, like I said, just, just within ComEd there, there are like, well, on the commercial side, especially, you know, the, the, the larger loads, I should say, um, there are a number of different net metering classes. There's over 12 of them, right? Mm. There's, there's, there's exactly 12. I always forget. Sounds right. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's really complex and, and you, you want to have, you want to have a local guide, I guess you could say, yeah. but, but the sales org thing, I mean, you, you, something that popped into my head again is it comes back to accountability, right? Yeah. A sales, sales rep that's a, or a sales org organization where they, by the way, are, for anybody that doesn't know, they're selling you the system and somebody else is building it. That's right. It, if things go badly after you sign that contract, who are you talking not to? Not their problem. Right. Yeah. Right? Who's your person? Anyway. They sell yeah. the job to the the EPC. Sales guy's and, long gone. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah, I think that's a that's a terrible business model, in my opinion. I'm sure other folks make lots of money and do well with it, but as far as taking care of your customer. Not a good business model because even if that sales guy has all the best intentions, mm-hmm. he has no control over what happens on that installation. No, right? I no, mean, almost none. Yeah. Right now, I work. No, 
don't get me wrong. I've worked with some great, great reps who that's what they do, yep. right? Like the run and gun yep. sales, sales folks. And the, the ones I've worked with, uh, by and large have been really conscientious are always looking out for their, their customer's best interests. But even if their interest is right. to help the customer, yeah. again, past the point of sale, they can't do a thing about it. Not unless um, they're throwing on the tool belt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, I mean, I guess one of the things that we've, you know, we've talked about extensively is that, you know, I, I had a front row seat to this, yeah. you know, I, I, one of, one of the, um, you know, one of the first few really big comp bigger companies, I guess you could say in, in the, in the Midwest area, mm -hmm. um, operating out of number of States is the company I previously worked for. And, um, when I was wooed away by, uh, by green links, yeah. uh, charm and chicken wings, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I had no idea, you know, I mean, now again, hindsight, looking, looking in the past, I mean, I had no clue, you know, I had no clue at the time, but looking into the past, I go, Oh yeah, the cracks were there. I should have seen it coming, Sure, but I didn't. I mean, yeah. I just knew what the pain points were at the time. And I, and I sort of was getting uncomfortable with a few things. Yeah. But now I, those things that I was uncomfortable about are the things that I will look for. Right. Like my life depends on it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And call it out when I see it. Yep. Um, because yeah, I mean, when I, when I left the company, we were just booming, you know, yeah. I mean, as the sales manager, our team was just crushing it. Um, we've been lucky to, to bring a few of those folks onto mm -hmm. our team and they're crushing it there. But, um, but yeah, I would say like some of the biggest things for me are, what are the, what are the red flags? What are the things like, if this happens, you might be <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. like a solar company that's going to go out of mm -hmm. business and will it happen right away? No, it never does. Uh, it takes a little while for, to, to build that house of cards and blow it down. But number one, uh, sales over production when, you know, when, when sales is, Great is, point. is, uh, focused on disproportionately to fulfillment, to mm -hmm. production, to building the systems, to yep. delivering on your sales promises, you have a problem. You have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've watched you it, when, when our, when our production team, you know, earlier on, much earlier on in, in Greenlink's, uh, you know, life production team was, was over capacity with, with jobs. You're like, we're going to pause sales, mm -hmm. which didn't it's a crazy move. <laughs> yeah. It did not make our sales <laughs> no. reps extremely stoked. Right. No, it would not. <laughs> But um, it was the right move. Yeah, because falling behind on our installation timeline promises, rushing through jobs and cutting corners—it's a ripple um, effect, right? I mean, it wasn't an option. Yeah, and and it was one I'm grateful that we didn't we didn't uh, choose. But such a great point, man. People get out ahead of their skis. They start taking deposits, and you know they don't maybe start off with bad intentions, but they can't get the systems built, which means they can't generate the cash flow which means they have to rely on more sales to get the deposits, to generate the cash flow, to build the projects that they're behind on. And it becomes a very, very slippery slope. And that's not just in solar, that's just in the world in general, but that is, that is a dangerous place to be. And that's a, you know, another good point that I think of that comes from that conversation is the amount of money that a company asks for when, the, when you sign a contract with them, if they're asking for 50% or, or some significant percentage of, of the funds upfront when you sign a contract, I'm not saying that that means that they're bad, but that's that is going to hit my radar a little bit. Uh, you know, at Greenlink, we asked for a 10% deposit, and we are spending that money and putting those expenses into the project right away. We're mm -hmm. starting engineering and site surveys and interconnection and all the things that go with that, but we don't ask for 50% or 70% of the project up front. Then you know that it's very likely that somebody's trying to overcome some cash flow challenges, if that's the case. Yeah, that's a really, really good point, right? Um I think, yeah. So, I mean, number one, I think you, you nailed it. Getting out over your skis, yep. uh, sales over production, too, too far over production. There's nothing wrong with chasing lots of sales and oh, yeah, doing absolutely. your best to, yep. to shore up the back of the business at the same time. But mm -hmm. if you see the writing on the wall, it's time to pu pump the brakes a little, right? Yep. And then, you know, uh, you know, another thing that I've, I've noticed with companies is falling into a rut in terms of, of your, your sales tools and models where like uh because you know i think back to you know a couple of years ago when there were there were 20 year 0.49 percent interest loans now right. granted these loans had some some dealer fees which for those of you who don't know that's a that's a 
it's a way for finance organizations to charge you uh, finance fees without charging you finance fees. Right. That's sort. It, it's technically legal. Very so, common in the automotive industry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah n- none of the, no installers can get around it. But but it's uh, it, and the numbers worked out great. I mean, right. uh, a lot of my friends, my family. I mean, yeah. It, the spreadsheets don't lie. You yeah. run the numbers and hey, it looks great. Let's do it. So twenty year zero point four nine. You know, you had a two hundred dollar a month electric, you know, combat electric bill ahead of, before going solar. You go solar, put no money down, and your your payment was like ninety eight dollars. It's like, hey, we're you know, do you want to want to do this? And you're like, uh, yeah, right, uh, Pretty right, solid move. So as you can imagine, it was not real hard to sell solar. Yeah, um, people that weren't probably very good salespeople mm-hmm. were earning a lot for companies, right? right? Uh, not just the one that I was at. Uh, across the industry, what, wh- how else was that Im- impacting the industry? Really, really low lease, lease, uh, cost of leasing, right? So power purchase agreements, uh, the, the third party organizations that owned these systems that then passed on the savings to the customers, well, they were able to pass on more savings. So it was just, you know, everybody's say, able to make money shooting in that fish in a barrel, rate. right? Yeah. And instead of looking in that and going, you know, driving that great car and going, this is going to be great forever. You know, when you should have been socking away a little cash because someday yeah. it's going to be, it's going to have high miles and you might hit a deer. Yeah. You, you know, you're, you're going to have to spend some money. You need to have to change some things. The same is true of solar sales of those, those models that we're working and, and, the, you know, which was the ground upon which, or part of the, 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 maybe the foundation, shall we say, on which the, the house of cards was being built it was bound to go away. And then after, you know, in, you know, lowered, lowered interest rates worked and inflation came down, interest rates shot up, right? Yeah. Deals didn't look as good. That changed everything. Got harder to sell. Yeah. These companies that were able to, to rob Peter to pay Paul with these, these loan, uh, you know, milestone payments that were coming in from these, these, uh, finance companies, didn't have that cash flow anymore. And all of a sudden, boom, next thing you know, they're like, well, maybe it's it'll be okay for a little while if we ask for 50% down deposits right. on cash deals. They start that slippery slope. All right, slope. sales team, we're going to lower our prices a little bit, and you're going to get incentivized to, to sell cash deals and win cool prizes. Yep. And, Man. And it's a very, very short step. Nobody wakes up in the morning and goes like, you know what, I... It's a great day for fraud. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not the way it happens for sure. No. I yeah. Mean, you know. Well, and that, you know, that's a good point. I want to touch on that real quick, too. It, it makes me think that, you know, as we see companies that come and go in the solar industry, I saw a competitor of ours shot out an email and said, you know, this does not bring us joy. This is not the type of industry, certainly at least not for us. We're not the type of group we don't want to see companies going out of business and filing bankruptcy and leaving consumers in a bad spot where they don't have their systems built or they're not being warranted. It's not good. It's not good for any of us. We don't want that. And a lot of the other good companies would feel the exact same way because it doesn't serve anybody. And it's unfortunate to see because we, like you just said, we believe these folks don't start off with bad intentions. It, it starts, like I said earlier, it's a slippery slope and it starts going downhill and they're trying to grab on, and next thing you know, like you said, then then they're committing fraud, trying to you know keep it all going. And, yeah, and that's it sucks to see, honestly. Any of the companies, the old ones that have gone away, and the new ones that are going away, it's it's not what we want. And that's why we thought it would be good to have this conversation to talk to customers, potential customers, former customers, and say these are the things to watch out for. Here's a way you can try to protect yourself. And again, there's no silver bullet to any of this. Unfortunately, we can't say here's the the magical questions that you need to be asking. But these are some really good points of awareness yeah. that somebody might not be thinking about. Tell me, I mean, here are the questions. Here are the questions I never very often heard from from a solar customer that if I was now giving advice to solar customers, which I guess we are, if you're mm-hmm. listening and you're a solar customer, yeah. uh, it, it's it's ask the questions nobody else is asking, mm-hmm. which is tell me how your company operates. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah we, we can talk about the price later. Right. Before we get there, I want to know this. Yeah. You know, like it's a great point, man. What are yeah. your employee benefits? Mm-hmm. What do you I mean, just like how well do you take care how, of your people? How, exactly. A great question to be asked. Right. Like, Absolutely. Uh, you know, what kind of company culture do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Define what good company culture is for me. Right. Um, you know, I'm like, like ask them questions that tell you they're a good company. Yeah. Like whatever you're buying. But 
Um, and, mm. and, 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 you know, That's like ask about their financial situation. Mm-hmm. Freaking A, man. Yeah. Ask them to show you the wizard behind the curtain. Right. Uh, how are you, how's your, uh, you know, how are your cash reserves? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. We've had PNLs looking good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do your investigations. You can't just jump in and, on top of that, too, I, I find often that people are drawn and gravitate towards, and it makes sense, right, to the lowest number. The mm-hmm. lowest number is, in a lot of cases, can be an indicator that things are probably not super ideal. It's suspect. Why would somebody be so much below market value on pricing? Typically, when that's the case, there is some kind of dire need that the organization has, which you've already touched on, to generate cash flow. Yeah. Because... Uh, it's just it's there's no other reason for it it's the keep the lights on principle right that's right just that's right. enough money coming in even if it's not enough money to be or not even close enough money to be po- profitable right it keeps expenses paid yeah Man. and maybe makes payroll most of the time yeah yeah <laughs> until maybe it, until <laughs> right. it doesn't right Oof. which is what we've seen uh and it sucks and it and it, and it really sucks it really 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 from the bottom of my heart like it really sucks yeah man. watching yeah. Your, your friends yeah who you helped you know and worked alongside of yeah. for, for years, then have to go through financial hardship because they, they earned commissions they're never going to get paid. I hear that I mean, so like, often. So and, often. It, you know, you look at some of these companies, the bigger companies that have fallen, and and, and we don't know the all the details of the, the ins and outs of it, but there's innuendo, right? Mm-hmm. Like with what went on with SunPower, that was a pretty, uh, a pretty uh, public fall, and, and nobody was super surprised because... It right. had been going on for more than a year, and there was some pretty ugly stuff there, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, and maybe we'll find out was fraud, but it sure sure doesn't look above board. Right? Things like, oh, oops, we made some mistakes on the books. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, investors. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, Enron play there. <laughs> Shoot. You know, right. like yeah, that doesn't work. And like, they were publicly traded, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's, uh, that's generally like, frowned upon. Doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> so I mean, and they it likely they they got. To those, I'm just assuming. I don't know. Uh, sorry, Sun Power. If I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is what happened, but I, if I were to infer and guess, it probably has a lot to do with some of the same things. Oh, I'm sure. Just at a bigger yeah. scale. At a bigger scale, absolutely. Um, well, I want to save a couple minutes here at the end to talk a little bit about you know some of the differentiators at GreenLink. You know, some of the things that we're doing, and we've touched on some mm-hmm. of it already here. Uh, our approach, our mindset, our culture of how, again, we try to aim and make sure that we have the longevity to be there to serve our customers, to make sure that we're giving them the right information and doing things the right way as best we possibly can. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on on what those things are to you, what jumps out at the top of your list. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think about, um, I, I'm going to talk about being I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about like my, my inconveniences. Okay. <laughs> so that's where we're going to go. Cause you know, as the guy who's leading our sales team, when I'm, there you know, go. yep. when I'm trying to just get some, you know, like, oh, we're working on getting a new financing company set up and we're working on this, working on that just to get our, our sales numbers where we want them to be and, yep. and get our team to be successful. Then Mr. Carr walks, uh, walks into the office or calls me and is like, all right, so I've been thinking about it. And we're going to, all right, from now on, we're making surge protectors standard on all GreenLink yeah, systems. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's that great. That's fantastic. But it's also <laughs> another like, wrinkle. <laughs> another wrinkle. And yeah, it changes the process. For but sure. I, I'll, I'll go and say that, you know, GreenLink, every company is going to tell you they go the extra mile. But just look for it. Look, you know, again, look for it in writing. Um, somebody can tell you they're their best, but. But, you know, and, 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 you know, I'll tell the sales reps, like, make sure people, people understand that just because the, the, somebody's system that they're, you know, comparing, you know, the, the, the company A versus GreenLink, where company A has the same solar panels and the same inverter, mm. it's not, it doesn't make it an apples to apples deal, right? Yeah. GreenLink is number one, you know, all our great reviews and everything in business over 12 years, show yep. me a lot of companies that are, that can do, can say that, right. Um, have multiple streams of revenue to float us through when the solar industry is going through turmoil, which mm-hmm. it was for a while last year. And who knows, might be, um, this year a little bit, but we're, we're doing great. We are. Um, and then, you know, 
surge protectors standard on every every installation. Yep. And tell me about why that is. Well, we uh, we learned the hard way. We had a, <laughs> a Fronius system that took a hit, took a surge, and that inverter fried. And so we're like, okay, no problem, Mr. Customer. We're going to get you back online here real quick. And so we called Fronius and said, hey, we need to start a warranty and RMA out on this inverter so we can get our customer back up and running. And they're like, well, funny story, actually. Surges are not covered under the warranty, which in hindsight, I, I sure. understand that. That's not their problem. Uh, so we went, we bought the inverter, we bought a new inverter for the customer and didn't charge them anything, took care of it, swapped it out and did end up putting a surge protector on that system and realized, wow, these aren't covered under warranty. The homeowner's insurance, maybe, maybe not, but that's a huge mm -hmm. hassle for everybody. And a surge protector is not that expensive of a product when you no. look at the percentage. When you're already there yeah, installing right. it, right? You're installing a solar system, you're spending the money to do it. Do it right. Add the surge protector. That way, everybody's covered. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing, right? You know, so like it's just another added level of of of, uh, yeah. of protection. You know, then you know, like CTs. That's another thing. Yeah. That 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 became Some accountability. A, a there regular, too. exactly. Yep. Like contract tra contact transformers. Mm -hmm. Again, like what was what what brought that about? Well, you know, our customers would call and say, "Hey, you know, I, I'm wondering how I'm doing, how my system's performing." And CTs were were measuring or monitoring the consumption from the house, right? Yeah. And so that customer would say, "You know, I've got a surplus of energy, or maybe I'm not producing as much as I thought I was going to produce." So we can dig into that system, and we often do for our customers if there's questions, and we'll start to run our analysis of what we proposed, what the software showed was going to happen on the system post install. And then what's happening right now? And it gives a level of granularity to the system to ensure that it's performing the way that it showed that the customer is getting uh, the production that was expected from that system. And additionally, if their utility bill spikes or their consumption goes way up, we can identify that, isolate it, and then we can offer additional value to that customer by mm -hmm. saying, hey, you've got maybe your electric baseboard heater still running in your house from the wintertime you didn't realize it or whatever the case might be. Right. We can help them in a number of different ways when you have that additional level of monitoring. Yeah, and for anybody who's like, oh, CTs and what does that mean? It's just basically like if you're, let's say you're on ComEd and this, net metering is going to work similarly with a lot of utility companies, but you're you're not going to see what your solar system produced on your ComEd bill, right? That's right. Um, you're going to see, uh, you, you're you're not going to, or I should say you should, you're not going to see what your house consumed of that. You're going to see on your bill, how much did you pull from the grid? Yep. How much did you send to the grid? That's it. That's that's the, the end. Right. Right. And then your solar monitoring software, depending on what what platform you have, whether that's Enphase, Solar Edge, Fronius, SMA, mm -hmm. the rest, uh, it, it'll give you a varying amount of information. Without CTs, you won't see. Sure, you'll see what your system, air quotes, produced. Right. But you won't see what the house received. That's right. Um, and so it's a a lot more of a of a guessing game. That's exactly what it is. Without CTs, it is, it is completely a guessing game. And it's not a standard offering, I no. find, with a lot of companies. I mean, although an Enphase and a Solar Edge system are capable of having CTs installed on them, it, it really puts the installer into a spot where there's a lot more accountability and, mm -hmm. and they have the ability to help that customer more. But uh, maybe in some cases they don't want that or they want to save the cost or whatever the reasoning is. Whereas even like a Fronius, I don't, does Fronius even offer CTs? I'm not, I'm not sure that it does. I mean, because not all systems even have that feature, at least built in right, and, and right. integrated through the manufacturer. Um, but, uh, you know, again, the equipment selection, the products that a company is using really speak to their desire for quality and longevity in the system. Yeah, for sure. And I get, you know, again, again, let's just use company A versus GreenLink again, right? You know, we've got, let's just say we've got REC solar panels mm -hmm. and we've got, uh, which are great, you know, you got your 25 yep. year uh, 20, 25 year warranty, highest efficiency on the market with a, you know, with a labor, la you know, labor, uh, stipend included. So it co partially covers sometimes wholly covers labor yep. when, it, when a panel, uh, fails great panel, let's say solar edge, you know, great company and phase could be the same thing, but solar edge system is a great example. Um, you know, a solar edge standard warranty is 12 years on that inverter, right? Yep. Yep. You know, you telling me that like a sales rep telling me like, well, co company A is selling them the rec panels and Solar Edge, and be like, are they selling them the the extended warranty? Right. Because we just by default, it doesn't. Just we don't up, we don't we upsell do. it. It yep. just goes in the deal. Yeah. It's every right. single Solar Edge system. Such a good point. We realized at some point we're like, I remember it was again, it was another great call you made. It's like, 
some of our, our sales reps weren't doing right by the customer as much right. as they should because yeah. they were too nervous or something. Yep. Uh, and we said, fine, we're gonna, you're not going to be nervous anymore because every single one gets it. Yeah, what a great move, too. I'm, I'm very pleased that we did that. I, I don't think that was necessarily me. It was a collaboration of the team, but sure. that was really sure. the right thing to do. Again, why would why would you buy this 25-year system, but then half of it's 25, half of it's 12? It makes yeah. no sense. Again, in the grand scheme of that kind of project, it's just the right thing to do. thousand percent, man. Yeah thousand percent well cool man i think uh we're at time for today i think that was a good conversation obviously we both know there are so many more things that we could speak about on this and uh, in fact you've got an event tomorrow that you're going to be at where you're going to be talking a little bit high level about some of these things that are happening in the industry as well right yeah yeah, yeah. i uh, actually yeah, put it put together a li i'm interested to see my email responses because i put together a whole long list this this particular topic which we've probably covered 15 percent of that's right is yeah is uh is on it along with some other things there's a lot of change right now in in, in solar and especially in the Il northern illinois market with the changes coming to net metering in 2025 and you know pro product pricing changing availability it's uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and yeah i'm excited to dive in well, that's what we're here for. So if you're here in this podcast, you want to learn more about some of the things that we're doing at GreenLink or just some general education information, we'd love to get you in contact with one of our energy advisors. And uh, we appreciate you listening and joining today. Thank you.